please welcome Senator Marco Rubio. Senator, thank you for joining us. Why not call a temporary truce and reopen the gov government as Senator Graham suggested so you're not holding all these federal workers and contractors and soon food stamp recipients hostage to this dispute over the wall? Yeah, I'm not saying we shouldn't. I think the question is whether the president and the Senate Democrats and the House Democrats can agree on it. There's only the only way to pass a law here. It's pretty elementary is it has to pass in the House, has to pass in the Senate with 60 votes. That means we need Repub either all the Republicans and some of the Democrats or all the Democrats and some of the Republicans. And then you need the president to sign it. Uh, you need those three things to happen. And right now, two of those three conditions are not in place. In essence, there is no bill that passes the House that can also pass in the Senate and or that the president will sign. And the only way this is going to end, I hate the shutdown. I think it's terrible. I think it's dumb. No one ever wins these shutdowns. But a lot of people lose, including these federal employees who have nothing to do with this but are getting punished. But the only way it ends is for the president and Senate and House Democrats to sit down and come to an agreement that he'll sign and they'll support. And I think Senate Republicans are prepared to support anything that can pass and that the president will sign. But right now they're not even talking and there's not even negotiations. And frankly, part of it is that Speaker Pelosi has made very clear that she won't give an inch. And you can't have a negotiation where your opening, you know, your posture is I get everything and you get nothing. Uh, that's just not a serious compromise uh, and certainly not a serious negotiating posture. And that's how this is stuck. And, and we're in a terrible spot right now. To the core point of dispute, the president says you have to extend this wall because there are areas where you just don't have any manpower on the border to guard it. To the Democrats point, if there is no manpower there and you're talking about remote areas where it takes Border Patrol hours to respond, what's to prevent intruders from scaling a wall with a ladder or digging under it with a shovel or cutting through it with a saw? Well, look, first of all, 40 percent of this proposal has nothing to do with the wall. It's access roads and technology and cameras and sensors. This is not five billion just for a wall. It is so a lot of it is, but some of it is for other things. The thing you point to, I've heard it discussed before, uh, but just think about what they're saying. They're saying someone's going to cross the desert of Mexico with a huge ladder or with a bulldozer to dig under a tunnel. Yeah, sure. I mean, it, I suppose it's possible, but not highly likely. I mean, you, you would notice that there's a heavy piece of equipment moving across uh, uh, the desert. They're trying to go underneath the wall. But the point of these walls is, and the areas where they're going to go in, is not simply to stop people, but to funnel traffic to areas that it's easier to monitor. And every president in modern history has constructed wall, every single one. And in fact, many of the leaders who are now opposing it have voted for far more than $5 billion to construct them in the past. So what president, whether you agree with the wall or not, what the president is proposing is not unreasonable. It's not an unreasonable request, and he has indicated a willingness to compromise. But right now, at least the position of Speaker Pelosi is she would not even give or she would give him a dollar and that's all she would do. That's just not a reasonable negotiating position. There's no way you can reach an agreement when the other side's uh, demand is unconditional surrender. We're not going to pass a bill that the president's not for. He has to sign it. Meanwhile, we have this crisis in Venezuela in which the Maduro regime seized power through a sham election. Why has the president not formally recognized the legitimately elected leader of the legitimate assembly of that nation as its legitimate leader? Well, he's recognized the National Assembly as the only legitimate democratic body. He can't recognize what they have not assumed. It, it first, the first step here would have to be that the speaker of the assembly over there, the president of the National Assembly, would have to assume his constitutional role before the 23rd of this month as the interim president pending a new valid election. I, I will predict that when, even when they do that, that the, not only the United States, but multiple countries in the region would then recognize him as the legitimate interim president. But he will have to go first. And I think one of the things that will cause them to do so, and they've taken concrete steps in that direction already, but one of the things that I think makes that likelier is a very clear message which is being sent on behalf of the United States and Brazil and Colombia and Canada and other nations in the region, that even when you declare yourself as the rightful, legitimate interim president, we will be there to support you. Senator Rubio, thank you for your time. Thank you so much.